What is up? It's your boy John Ashree Live, the proponents of Tell Like It Is. Welcome back to a long overdue episode of Coaching Up. I read a comment down there said, Coaching Up's dead. Uh, are you nuts? That is like bread and butter. That's how I showcase everything that I can do at my fullest abilities. Anyway, we're gonna go over today's chest workout. Actually, it's the beginning of Anthony Mattel's intro. I literally thought it was the entire video and it was like 30 seconds, but it's reminding me that it's the new year. 2022, a lot of newbies and some people who probably need a little re-up of some coaching and some techniques. So we're gonna go over some pressing movements, some flies, some ladder raises, because literally all they did. Anyway, before we get started, guys, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel and make sure you guys hit the subscribe button because next time I put a video, we'll be the first one to get it. All right, let's get it going. Okay, so first we're gonna start off with bench, well, flat bench, flat press, flat chest, anything, something that we need to go over a lot. And I made some similar mistakes going through chest movements as well too, but when we're doing flat press, any kind of press, we're gonna go over the basics first. You guys are gonna remember this. Those of you guys have been following for a long time know I'm gonna say shoulder depression. So we wanna get our shoulders down and we wanna get our chest up. Basically that whole posture where we're like this, that's where we wanna be. And then we wanna make sure that we use this as leverage. You wanna use the back as leverage. So we wanna make sure our butt is at the back of this thing here. We wanna make sure we're engaging our core, but we still want a little bit of a tiny curvature on our back. Not an accentuated one like this. We need all that stuff here. We just want a nice little healthy, little bit of arch in our back. Our, and our core is still engaged. So when we're pressing, we're using our core, our butt, our legs to actually push, and we're pushing ourselves in the back of the bench. So I'm gonna do a set and show you guys time and attention number one and two, how you should be moving throughout the lifts. So a lot of you guys do a couple things where you basically press from here, then we're catching it and doing this, and we're catching and doing that. What you think about it, probably about three inches of that lift. A lot of people losing that rep. So think about it, if you did about, I don't know, 10, 15 reps, you lost about three inches, that's probably a few reps you're wasting. So we wanna make sure we're pushing straight through the actual movement. So when we're starting off here, this is a fancy machine here, but it's gonna have the same principles when you're on a bench, dumbbells, whatever it is. We're in an upright position here, pushing back. My butt is the back of this bench. I'm engaging my core, my chest is up, my shoulders are engaged, shoulder depression, and we're pushing out and all the way back. Your negative looks like one, two, three, and then a stretch and then a push. So we wanna continue that movement, we're here, then pushing in the back of the bench. We don't wanna roll our shoulders and do this. We wanna make sure we continue to have our shoulders depressed, our chest up, butt at the back of the bench, core engaged, and feeling the weight come down and pressing up. Now, when it comes to range of motion, we don't have to come all the way back here because then my shoulders are off. I can feel all that in my shoulders. Sorry, my chest is off. I feel all that in my shoulders. So we're gonna make sure we stare a little bit, I would say about an inch or two above the chest so we can engage the chest right away and push back and push, right? We don't wanna drop from here, and we wanna drop from here and try and catch it. A lot of that, a lot of times I see a drop from here and a catch, and then a drop to here and a push. We wanna have a constant movement from here, and pushing out. Push, one, two, three, push. One more rep, stretch it back, and push. So we're in a upright, another vertical pressing machine, but this is a incline press. I wanna go over this because a lot of people get this machine wrong. So I've done the same similar mistakes in the past. In terms of where my chest is in relation to the handles and as well as the actual back of the bench. So for the most part, a lot of us are kind of doing this. We slid up a little front, we kind of slid to the front of the bench a bit. Our chest is up high like this and we're pressing and we're doing all this stuff right here. Now, unfortunately, Doing this, we've now taken our chest and raised it up here. And now we're basically doing flat bench again, right? The whole point of doing this machine is that the pressure, the load stays on the top part of the chest, your clavicle head, a little bit of your interior head of your shoulder as well too. But again, we want the load to stay here. So we want this to do this basically, as well as this. So we're trying to, so we want to have shoulder adduction and we do want a little shoulder extension as well too to help it up, right? So when we're doing this, again, from the floor to core, plant our feet on the floor, we don't want them all just doing this kind of stuff. We don't want any of this kind of stuff. We're like kind of tap dancing. We're getting the hard reps, we're doing this stuff. Crip walking and shit. <laughs> anyway, so from floor to core, we wanna make sure we're pushing our feet to the ground. That's where we're gonna get most of our leverage from, the kinetic energy, right from the floor, all the way to the butt, pushing back of the seat, firmly on, a little bit of a nice curvature in your back, not a lot, we're not doing this. We wanna engage from here, because we're pushing into this bench as well too. So when we're pressing, 
we want to press up and keep that load on the chest. Remember, if I do this, and I'll take my chest and move it all the way up, now we're doing flat bench, similar. A little exaggeration, but again, if we want to optimize our clavicle head or the pec minor, we want to be back, push to the core, pushing up. You can see the fibers in my shut. You can see the fibers in my chest and the top part of my delt working on the way down. Again, we don't want to drop it here and then push up, or we don't want to drop this rep here and then try and catch it on the way down. We want a nice fluid motion from here. Remember, you're just engaging the muscle under a load. Down, and then squeezing and pushing yourself into the bench. Remember, we don't want to push off like this. Head back, chest engage from here. And pushing up again. My shoulders are depressed to keep me from doing this. We don't want our shoulders riding up. We don't want shoulder elevation, we want shoulder depression. And there you have it. Okay, cool. So now we are sitting on this super fancy hoist fly machine, pec deck, if you want to call it. It's meant to be held like this. Just so we don't confuse anybody, I'm actually going to grab this part of the machine to give me a little more of a natural feel from this. So don't get stuck thinking that because the machine has a certain thing that it's supposed to be exactly used that way. Now, I'm not saying come in here and do some fancy shit while you're doing all this stuff. I'm saying just come inside, use a machine. If you don't like using these handles, it's totally, totally fine for you to use the back of this because you're gonna get the same activation and being a little more stable here on your hand, right? Now I can still grip here, but again, I wanna have that push coming from this part of my hand, opening up a nice, we want a good, you know, healthy bend in our arm. We don't want to be up like this. We don't want to be down like this either. A lot of mistakes I see when we're doing flies is we have too much shoulder internal rotation. So we have a lot of this. This looks completely and utterly uncomfortable. And then we have too much external rotation. So we're almost doing like the clap the back, clap the, doing this kind of weird thing. I don't know what this even is. It looks, looks weird. Does it weird? All right, so we want to be out, slight bend. Remember again, from floor to core, chest up, push back, and then squeezing through, open up, get chest, and then we're gonna pull through. We don't wanna come back, recoil and react, and we don't wanna just drop here and try and catch on the way down. We want a fluid motion from here, pushing through, squeeze the chest, think about what's actually being used, which is the clavicle head again of the chest. So if you think about this, this movement itself is primarily the chest movement because your chest coming from your clavicle head your sternal head your intercostal head we're going to come to your humerus and it's going to pull the shoulder in that's his job is to do shoulder adduction so this machine here is doing exactly what the chest is tending to do which is pull in so think about pulling in from your chest open up and then engage your chest when you pull in mike wick likes to say something like almost like ease into the press easing into it and squeezing the top and back now we don't have to come in and and do this kind of stuff either. When we're pushing, we want to have total control. So a good way you can give yourself a little bit of a challenge is to make sure if you have one of these stoppers on, we want to make sure we just tap it. Come through, nice open up, ease into it, and like literally tap it. And that's going to make you slow down the entire rep, and make it that much harder on your chest. Before we get started on our last exercise, make sure you guys hit the description below. I'm putting out private videos, not part of YouTube, but it's just private videos that can help optimize your training. So hit that subscription below. There's already two free videos that are there. So it's free for you guys, free. As well as that stuff's free too, but it's even more free. It's freer. So get down there below, hit that free email. So anyways, they finished off their intro with doing ladder raises. It was a ladder raise machine. We're gonna use the cables because that's basically the closest thing I can come to that movement. But again, the same fundamentals will be used for cable ladder raises. Um, Dumbo ladder raises, same fundamentals. So check out my homepage. You'll see the first video, it's on shoulders. Give you guys some tips on how to actually optimize your shoulders. The sweet shoulder workout as well too, but we're gonna go over this right now. When we're doing ladder raises, again, when we're doing a lateral movement, we don't have to be completely to the side like this. And we don't wanna be out front like this way either. We wanna eliminate having too much of a bend in our arm because again, if we're looking at like gravity, right? When we're pushing on gravity, gravity's gonna push down on my arm right here, but it's gonna push on on every part of my arm. So if I'm weaker here, gravity's here, the dumbbell's here, it's gonna do a lot this like this to my shoulder, and then I'm getting a lot of traps engaged. I wanna keep my arm out straight, tur, right? So if I give a little bit of a tip here, throw like a punch right here, I'm gonna move it all to the side on a little bit, of like almost like a 45 this way. 
not completely this side, and then raising from here up. And I want you guys in the vision pulling from your elbow, not from your hand. So I see a lot of people doing this and their arm does this kind of stuff, or they're doing too much of this and their arm kind of this little weird limp wrist thing here. So you want to be strong from here throughout the fist, all the way through to the shoulder, and pulling from here. So I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about. So we're going to go over ladder raises. We're just going to use a single arm. We're not going to use the same machine because we don't have the machine here, but the same fundamentals are going to be across the board. We're doing dumbbell ladder raises, cable ladder raises, machine ladder raises, whatever. Either way, if you're doing it with a cable, I recommend putting your inside foot through, stepping through, so you have a nice pathway for the cable to go up and not hit you in the groin. And from here, we can have a little bit of a lean to clear way through and then having tension already on my shoulder from here and then we're gonna pull up and down. Remember, we're trying to pull with our elbow. We're not trying to pull with our hand and do this, right? You wanna pull straight up. And think about pulling up and out. We're trying to extend the arm. We're not trying to just pull it up and do this. We're trying to pull it in the longest pathway through so we can keep a semi-straight arm. We don't wanna have it completely bent like this and we don't have it locked out like this either. Nice comfortable bend the elbow, elbow and pulling up and then pull that shoulder, pull the shoulder and the elbow and at the top we want to be straight across. We don't want our arm to be like this, we don't want to be up like this, we want to be straight across from here and down. Now a good way to see if you're actually doing it right, if you're looking in the mirror, if you're pulling up this way, your tricep isn't sitting down like this. So think about your tricep, if you're looking in the mirror, a good cue is to make sure you don't see the bottom of your tricep. If you see the bottom of your tricep, you're going to look like this. And then our shoulder is down this way and then we're pulling a lot more with our anterior delt and we're trying to pull with a lateral head. Anyway, that is it guys for the first episode of Coaching Up. A lot more to come. Again, every Tuesday and Thursday there will be a Coaching Up video on again guys. If you guys want to get those exclusive videos, hit the description below. Also guys, make sure you guys hit the subscribe button because you don't become all the tell like it is transparent available truth. For coaching, johnnyshree.com. My prices will be going up the second week of January. So get in right now. I get all into this stuff. When we do coaching, it's literally a pocket coach. It's me in your palm, your hand, getting help, tips, cues, all the good stuff. Anyway, if you want to know about coaching, book a phone call consult, 15 or 30 minutes. At the end of that 30 minutes or 50 minutes, I deduct the consult off any package that you pick. Use those codes below, guys, in the description. They will help save your life or change life for the better. HGLT supplements, let's get checked, Fit Army, everything's down there, and make sure you guys grab the ebook. Anyway, follow me on Instagram and TikTok. Send me your progress pics, your foodie pics, and your training clips, and I'll repost it for you guys. You know how it is. Iron Chef is Iron, progressive overload your life. In the meantime, keep dream chasing. Peace.